Right, I'm assuming this video player is recording. So um, this is for the slipway brief. I'm just going to be going through just the concepts I've been sent, which are lovely, and just providing a bit of feedback and sort of possibly ways that I would explore the brief and maybe some changes to make. So first of all, thank you for doing the slipway coffee brief. Um, if you're happy with this video, I'd love to share it in the education group. Um, but if not, I completely understand. But I think it'd be useful just to see uh, the feedback process, perhaps how I work, things like that. So anyway, as we know, this was the creative brief. Uh, it was all to do with branding a small artisan coffee shop. That is all to do with customer service and the local community, offering the usual coffee, tea, hot drinks. So, uh, you know, you're looking at your your local sort of trendy but cool uh, ethical coffee shop. That was the brief. And the first part of the brief uh, was a brand identity, which this is what it's for. So I'm thrilled to be sent this. I can't stress that enough. It's always, uh, curi I'm always curious if, if, you know, I want to help people. I want to put these out there. And it is a little bit frustrating if people don't bother to engage. I completely get it. This is optional and they're very busy. But the fact you've got involved, I'm very, very proud and um, thrilled. So thank you very much. Right, so nice start, love the picture, and I like the cookie. So what we'll do is we'll go down. So here we go, concept one. And I will run through each concept, and I'll just give you some feedback. So option one, um, I really like the S here. It sort of reminds me of a coffee shop from, a, sorry, coffee mug from above. Um, and I think that the way the text is sort of laid out, so the, so the contrast, so I pick out the pink here and and the black is quite nice, you know, because it sort of it makes it visually easy. Uh, I probably prefer this layout, but I like the fact it can work both ways. So I thought this was a good, strong um, alternative. Uh, I will dig a little bit deeper in a minute. So if we, well, what I would probably be looking for, I think this typeface here is. I'm thinking it's probably lobster. Let's zoom right in. I'd be looking for something which perhaps uh, was a bit more original. I would probably struggle with using three typefaces across one logo. So I'm guessing this is probably Bebus Noi or something like that. And this looks like um, Futura or Proxima Nova or something like that. So I really like this sort of square typeface and this works very well as well. My hesitancy would be they're very clean. And we know that the client, it's all to do with being artisan, which is hands-on, handmade craft. So I'd be looking for slightly softer edges to these typeface, maybe a hint of texture. This can always be done afterwards in Photoshop and Illustrator, but initially I'd probably think, okay, maybe we could um, stick to maybe two typefaces uh, and look to add a bit more texture and a bit more character into the design. Uh, Colour-wise, um, I'm not mad about the colours. I'd probably look to go for something a bit richer. So this brown feels like a sort of chocolate ice cream where I'd want to go for sort of like a coffee colour, so which is going to be sort of a darker, rich brown and I always think when I think coffee and dark brown, I think the quality of the roast and the craftsmanship. So that would be where my head would be going. Like I said, it's a really good start. I like the way they work both ways. And I particularly like this S as it feels quite distinctive um, and sort of handcrafted. So I'm very happy with that. Option two. Um, loving the blues here. I'm a sucker for blues, admittedly. Um, but again, what I like about here is clearly I get that it's a coffee shop straight away. You've you obviously need you've left out the word coffee shop because you've got a coffee mug, which makes complete sense. I like the simplification of the information. Um, again, I probably would want to get a bit more texture in there. I'd probably look at maybe uh, getting this logo overlaid onto the cup. So if I can bring all these elements together into one element, that's going to be easier for sort of placement and um, sort of condensing the information so it's a much more applicable. That way I can turn the badge into a sticker, sorry, the badge, the logo into a badge or a sticker. I can change the style of cup to represent what type of drinks they might be doing. So it might be a sort of smoothie, sort of tall glass or a hot chocolate tall glass or a teacup or a coffee mug or a takeaway cup. And that way, if we get quite sort of literal about, so it's easy to identify, so less iconography, but more literal, uh, coffee cup then that would probably be a way to go there one tip if you've got it is are you like to use the noun project and what this allows me to do is look up um, sort of icons which is sort of shorthand for designs here and that gives me a huge variety straight away that I can work with so if I was looking at coffee cups I personally would stay away from sort of more information icons and I would go for something which is quite naturalistic and quite well drawn so off the top of my head if I'm looking to pick one out Things like this, 
as a silhouette might work better like that one um, because I clearly know what type of thing I'm after. If I look up cup, I'm looking for so for, like here, I can search teacup. And I'm going to look for what I would expect to see as a teacup. So that's more of a mug. This is a tea. So again, what this does is I can click and choose these and just drag them into my work straight away and I can start working with logos very quickly. So just, just as a tip, the noun project is very useful. So, okay, so again, I'd probably go color wise. I want a bit more depth. It feels very clean, uh, very modern. And I think I'd probably be for going for something a bit more rustic. Okay, option three. Um, again, it, I like the blue. Um, I like what you've done with the nautical sail. I think probably this lends itself to like golf um, or sailing and would be slightly confusing. I like what we're using with the paint stroke here, though. I like that sort of hint of maybe using paint strokes and different colored paint strokes as part of some form of the branding because it's textured is really strong and again we've gone for what i suspected lobster and bebus as the type combination here now overall what i would like to see is it's very much repetition of the same type faces this might be the route you've gone down and what you feel would work i completely understand that i'm going to offer a few alternatives as to how i would pick type faces and colors just to give you a very brief insight into how i work so I can feel I've explored all areas. And then when I say yes or no to one, I'm confident that I've explored it enough to help. So we'll switch over now to my keynote document. I'll go full screen with this. So uh, actually, we won't go full screen because I've got my cursor. I'll zoom in a bit. So here we go, read the format. So I've gone for three script type faces there, three sans serif sort of normal, I'd say, I don't want to say rounded, but those sort of squarish proportion wise and three condensed typefaces here. And what this allows me to do very quickly is to scan all of these and see what type of typeface is speaking to me in the same sort of tone of voice and language I'd want the brand to convey. So when I look at this here, I'm thinking, well, these square edges, it's a bit too corporate. Although I do like Gil Sands, it's probably a bit too corporate for me. Uh, I'm not quite sure, I don't mind that, but again, it's probably a bit too common. Bebus Noy is a very common typeface. So I'm looking for something a bit more interesting. This is really nice. It's probably a little bit too intricate. The W here and the, the P is lost. So it feels a bit more like a sort of Americana diner vibe more than the, rather than sort of a rustic alternative. Um, when I move down to the middle layer, I'm thinking this is lovely, very sort of soft edges, very sort of hand rendered. This would be a strong choice for me. It's something I'd be definitely looking into. Um, again, I'm looking here, the Brandon Grotesque, if we look closely, we can see these slightly rounded edges are the sort of things that I'm looking for. They're not sharp like we'd find here. And it's those subtle differences just make all the difference because we all notice them subconsciously. And so that would be something I would be considering. Again, the proportion size is quite nice as well. It's quite square. So that'd be a good, another strong one. And again here, this is wheat, an unusual typeface. But what I do quite like here with this is again, slightly softened edges and an unusual condensed typeface. It's quite tall, it's quite slim, which is something which we can't say of here. This angular Helvetica condensed is a bit awkward. I also prefer the uppercase. This is quite interesting, but again, it's a bit too square and a bit too solid. I'm looking for something softer and more artisan. And this would be another strong one here. However, it feels for me a bit too much like handwriting, where this feels a bit more deliberate. So out of this selection, I'd go for these three. And what I've managed to do now is I'm starting to look at adding texture within the typeface to soften it. Because I'm thinking, how is this going to look against materials such as craft paper, uh, you know, rustic card, that sort of thing. And I want the paper to come through the type. So it feels like it's hand printed or stamped. And what we see here, this, when we zoom in close, we can see these are vector graphics, but as you zoom slightly out, this sort of rustic softened quality is exactly what I expect to happen to say the typography on a coffee bag with that sort of sackcloth that's starting to get worn away as it's handled. And again, all of these are starting to add subtle textures into it. So these would be my three that I would take to explore. So I'd go from this and I'd pick my top three. I'd go for the qualities I want, which is roughness and texture and hand quality because it's artisan. And I'd work with these three. The next stage is to sort of do a simple box and work with relationships and proportion and scale of the text. So here I'm looking to thrash out how is this text going to work, either really big, really small or really medium, really wide spacing or really tight spacing. 
I can rattle this off fairly quickly, which will just help speed up the whole process so I'm not agonizing over it so I can get to a final decision. So if you look here, standard set, normal sort of wide space that I get naturally with the type. I reduce the type down, I can see it's still legible. Proportionally, I quite like the way this is working if we're going for a minimalist, minimalist layout. So again, I'm not ruling this out at this stage. When we start to blow it up, although it works, for me, the longer I look at it, I really struggle with this SLI. It doesn't feel like a slip anymore. The way is clear, but this, I can't explain it. It might be the spacing here, but I'm beginning to lose the context of the word. So I'm concerned by how this works when blown up large. So if we go back to this sort of minimalist size here, when we start to widen it, again, I, I quite like the widen look, but I'm, I'm losing the word slip. For me, it looks weird. I might have seen it too much, but that is a concern for me. And again, when we go massive, which I didn't mind, and we start to play around with the layouts, I'm thinking, I'm not so sure if this is going to work for me. So already I'm looking to discard this route. So by this way, I've gone from nine. I've gone down to three, three different typefaces. <clears throat> and I'm looking to discard the tool version now. I'm looking to go, maybe this isn't the one for me. So if it's all about speed and repetition, next. I'm going for the sans serif, um, sort of more square on brand and grotesque, or brand and printed as this is. And I think, yeah, it works at that scale very well. Works at a small size as well, so that's encouraging. This is an all uppercase typeface, so I know that I can reduce it and still get legibility. As we get bigger, um, again, it starts to look a bit peculiar for me. This might be my problem, but I think it's working worse at a bigger size. So we're going back to the small size, when we start to space it out, I think it's a similar problem. I'm not sure. It looks okay, so it's better than the other one, but I don't, I'm not sure if this wide spacing works. So this would be where my head was at. But again, I've got to try it large. I've got to change the layouts and see how they sit. I don't mind either one of these. I think sort of proportion-wise, it's fairly balanced. It does look a bit peculiar, but that's not bad. So at the moment, I'm thinking where the first one, I'm, I was hesitating, I'm going to rule out, where now I'm coming into this and going, yeah, there's definitely potential for using this. Um, I like the way this is looking and this is fitting. So the third one now is the hand lettered typeface called Bali Script, which I really love. I have to admit I'm biased towards this. I do love this typeface a lot. But again, I'm thinking artisan, I'm thinking right. So that handcrafted, so hand lettering fits into that beautifully. But I've got to test it. What's the functionality of this typeface? So at a small size, Again, working beautifully, still very refined. The letter forms are very clear. I possibly would look to extend the, this lower part of the Y, maybe bring that round and sort of do a swish or a swash or whatever it's called in there. When we make it large, I can then say, okay, I've got to slightly rotate this one to make sure it fits within the dimensions. Otherwise, you're going to be left with this awkward space here. And actually, I prefer it rotated. So I'm going to keep it rotated but it's too big and I'm not sure when you get to blow it up large how it works as well. So I'm going to go back to what I would consider a more regular size at rotate an angle of about 7%. And this is sort of thing I'm kind of happy with. At the moment, this would be my front runner. And I go, OK, I like the way this is going, but there are other elements to consider. As we know, when we go back to the brief, it's a slipway coffee shop. So I do have to factor in that the client might want me to include these two other words. So how am I going to build these in? I go back and I think, oh, I remember this brand and printed worked well at a low size. Um, it was solid enough to hold its own at a low size. It could be wide space, a wide kerning if I needed it. So it's given me a lot of flexibility. But the problem is now if I start to play around with this, I'm thinking, how can I arrange these so they look more natural? Is that going to fit better over here? Uh, what am I going to do to get this arranged? So I've got to play with it. And ultimately, I'm going to go, right, proportionately, I've got to start adjusting these. What's the priority? It's slipway. So that should be the dominant one. And the and the coffee shop are secondary, so they can be reduced in size. So when we look at layouts, we can look at something like this. Now, although this isn't perfect, it will do for now. And we can see that we've left with a bit of space here so we can fit in the the. Still legible, still works. And the coffee shop is actually going to come into this space where the Y is. So I don't need to extend that Y anymore. I can just slot this in this sort of gap. Now, when I'm dealing with typefaces, I just look at them as shapes. I try not to worry too much about the letter form. So I would see this as a shape and I'd see this as a space, this as a space, 
this is a space and possibly this is a space here. So I might draw a square around it and go, where are the additional spaces for me to put things in? So that's how I've come to this layout. By all means, I might move things around. I might think actually we could do better. I might go, well, actually, if we have it, maybe that one's got to go centrally up there. And this one's got to come like this. And I'm going to take all three and I'm going to move it up. And I might go, well, maybe that's it. But I can already see that this seems to be jutting out too far. So I'm already fiddling. So I, again, it's all playing around with the relationship between the information that I'm giving. And I think I'd probably go back to what we had before, which would be something along these lines here. So let's stick with that for now. Again, we're trying to hurtle through, get work done and start to work on. And one execution we can go, I'm happy with that. I can put it to one side and go on a second different one. So this is where I might go back to the condensed typeface and go, right, how am I going to juggle the elements here to make something out of that? Because I need to explore every avenue and I need to do it quickly and I need to give myself variety. So this is what we're looking for. So if we stick with this one, we're going to talk about colour. So all I've done here is I've gone to Pinterest, I've searched rustic because rustic would work. It's an artisan coffee shop. The interior is going to be full of natural textures. So these type of pictures work well for me. We've got the wood. We've got the, a more exposed painted wood here, wooden beams, you know, uh, natural fibres, fire. It's the type of qualities I want to convey. Now, funnily enough, when I see a lot of these things, the interior designers, and I always recommend them, they've paired the natural wood textures with these dark greys and graphite. So all I've done is I've got my colour picker and I've picked out various colours. So this dark grey is here. This cream was up here. Um, this sort of grey obviously is this wool and this was a brown that I got from around the wood here and I had to make it slightly darker and a bit more red so I was looking to balance this because if it felt too wooden too flat it didn't quite work so from these pictures I've picked out a series of colours so now I can go well these are sort of rustic colours they're quite minimalist they're going to work well with natural um, textures and natural materials so as a starter I'm quite happy with this now, how do I take this logo and I start to play with it? So now it's really simple. I just take our design and I start to drag and drop colors in to see what's working. So here we've got a nice dark blue background with a cream sort of type. Then we've got this gray, which works quite well. And then a cream solution here. And I've just used the brown to offset the word coffee shop. So what this has allowed me to do is very quickly rattle out a few alternatives and I might say do you know what I like that one so I might just uh, duplicate the page delete the colors and I might go these are my two favorites copy paste I might go right there we go put it on the full screen to see they're my two favorites so far I'm going to stick with those and that's going to be option one and then I'm going to go back to the brief and go right what could I do as another alternative but for me at the moment that would be a good place to be and I know because I've explored lots of typefaces and I've come down to these two which work um, I'd also go in for you know I think that color wise it's quite reserved and restrained so that would work for me as well so this would be my process how I'd do that and as a real test I'll put these screenshots on Instagram a bit later and see what the response is if people go mad for it then maybe that's the right one. But again, I'm not going to rely on them too much. I'm going to have strength of my own conviction. I'm going to go back to the brief, make sure I'm taking into consideration everything I've been told. And this might be my final outcome. So the reason I'm showing you that is when I come to look at these, I really like them. I think this is a fantastic start. All I would make as far as improvements would be, can we look at a bit more colour options that are a bit more in keeping with what's required on the brief? And can we look at some more type options that might be different? So you've explored this route. Now maybe explore a script route or a more sort of uh, handcrafted, hand lettered or whatever it might be. Explore different routes. And the key is to just rattle through them as I showed you. So you can go, right, I've hammered that down. Bang, put it to one side. Next, hammer that down with the same process. Next, put it to one side. And you'll just get faster from the repetition. Then when you finish, you pick up options one, two and three that are wildly different. Go back to the brief, which one answers the brief best and go, right, that's the one I'm going to pick. I'm going to push that 
and flesh that out. And I'm going to start to go, okay, what type can we do? Now we've got the type sorted. What can we do for the logo? So maybe it's a coffee cup. Maybe it's an S in coffee like that. So now once I've, I'm happy with my type, I can begin to go, okay, I'm going to play around with how I work this into a logo. And that would be my advice as to how I would do it. But like I said, it's a fantastic start. I would just put these to one side now, possibly explore more options. And remember, even though you're discarding loads, your brain is remembering and storing all this information. So the next time you get a similar brief, you can go, well, I didn't use this cup idea, but that would work really well for a pizza place because I could use one of those pizza boards or I could use a pizza silhouette and we could work on that and I could use chalk letter. And you can get inspired by maybe not using this concept for now, but maybe a future project. And that would be my way of doing it. And like I said, throw it up on social if you want some feedback. But again, take it with a pinch of salt because they're not the client. They don't understand the brief. And that's it. I hope you found it helpful. I'm always here for questions. And if anyone else is doing the brief, please send it my way.